Hello, I wanted to put together a video to share some of my experiences as a diabetic and hopefully some information that I'll give you will help you or a family member or your child or a friend in the future so that uh, um, maybe their life will be a little bit easier or maybe your own, um, whatever have you. Um, first, I wanted to say that um, I've been diabetic long enough to know people that have passed away because of low blood sugar and complications of diabetes and it's a very serious disease most people sort of underrate it because they don't have enough information about it to really understand what's going on and there's a lot of people out there that just really would love to know or have a little bit of information to help them along and maybe it'll you know do some good um, my first experience with low blood sugar, I was following all the doctor's orders and um, once you're on insulin, it's something that's going to happen. It's not if it's going to happen, but when it's going to happen. Um, the fire department was called and I was refusing sugar. My wife was trying to give me some sugar water and to me it tasted like salt. You get very combative. You don't really want to listen and your mind just isn't working properly. So when you're dealing with somebody with low blood sugar, they just really aren't in the right frame of mind. It kind of takes you out of normal context and puts you into a different fight or flight mode. And um, a lot of times when I'm low, I know I am, but I don't always acknowledge it to myself. And I just kind of put it off thinking I'm just going to finish what I have to finish and then I'll get, you know, take care of it. That's not the way it should happen. If you're low, you need to take care of it immediately. Sometimes you don't know you're low. And then people try to convince you you are and you don't want to believe them. So, the first thing I learned is that glucose works much faster than sugar. It, the body doesn't need to break glucose down it's already in the form that your body needs to accept it and this is what your brain works off of glucose sugar so I I carry these drinks with me everywhere I also carry glucose gummies they're a lot easier than um, the gels or or the hard ones the hard uh, tablets they're much easier to chew and they're faster and along with the drinks so I have these by my bedside, I carry them with me on my backpack wherever I go, and even if I know my backpack, I have a bag of them in my pocket or in my wife's purse or whatever. And uh, these are much more convenient to just drink real quick. If I'm riding my bicycle or my motorcycle or whatever, I've always got something. I've forgotten things before, and that was a huge mistake. Um, and luckily, I've been able to fall back on people around me and uh, you know Pepsi Coke not sugar free you need all the sugar you can get when you're low carbohydrates they try to tell you that maybe drink 15 grams or whatever but in reality sometimes just need to intake what you can just to get yourself back up and running you know and then constantly check your blood glucose um, for me, it was the finger sticks all the time, and now I've went with uh, Freestyle Libre, the sensor on the back of my arm. Just read it with my phone, and so much easier. Um, you can check it a thousand times a day if you want to, because you're not using up anything, and it's good for 14 days. In my opinion, it's the best thing that I've had besides the, the pump. Um, I use the Omnipod, which is a remote, doesn't have a tube on it. Um, you just use a little uh, PDM that goes with it. Works really well. It's like carrying another cell phone. A little inconvenient carrying another piece of equipment, but it gets you as close to normal between the sensor and the pump. It gets you pretty close to what a normal person would be, you know, when it comes down to controlling it. I was diagnosed at 42, which makes me uh, basically a 
part of one and part of type two. Um, it's called the LADA latent adult onset. Um, when I first was diagnosed, I was using low amounts of insulin because I was in the honeymoon stages of the disease, which means my pancreas was still working, still gener you know, generating insulin. So I just had to kind of top everything off and, and control it. It was pretty easy. As time went by, it got much more difficult, you know, and uh, my pancreas stopped working. So I wasn't producing any insulin whatsoever. So I had to, had to make that up with the pump. Um, so along with that, sometimes you'll get insulin resistance, like the type 2 skits, so they have to take other medications in order to, for their body to allow the insulin to be absorbed. So you can have it in your, in your body because if you've injected it, but it doesn't always have the ability to become, be used by your cells. So, you, you know, normally you might take a unit or two or five units and maybe that doubles. Um, I've also run into um, carb absorption issues. Um, I can be low and I can intake 15 or 20 grams of carbs and my blood sugar will continue to die, go down instead of up. And there's been times where I've taken a lot of carbs and um, I've had to sit up for over an hour and a half to get things under control. And you're going to have to do whatever is necessary to keep yourself under control. You're going to have to test, test, intake, test. You know, if you're trying to get your, your blood sugar down, you're going to have to give yourself some insulin. Monitor yourself constantly because sometimes you can stack your insulin usage and then it's not going down, it's not going down, it's not going down, and you can't keep taking insulin large amounts because eventually it's going to drop. And then when it drops, you're trying to play catch up. And if you're not at home with a bunch of carbs or something, or say you're at a game or you're in an exercise, then it's going to be real trouble. So that's why it's always best when you go somewhere that you've got somebody with you. Um, that knows what you need or, or what you have available and has a little bit of background on your life so that, you know, if something happens, you've got somebody they can call, they can administer some simple medication, give you glucose, whatever. So I can't imagine what it would be like to have a child that was diabetic because it's hard enough to control it as an adult on myself. I have no idea what it would be like to try to control it on another person. I, my hat's off to you because there's no way, I have no concept of that. I struggle with my own. I can't imagine what it's like for somebody else. All I can suggest for you is Get all the supplies, all the equipment you can to try to make it as, as easy as possible. You know, try to, try to take some of the burden off your, off your back and, and use technology all you can because it's, it's tricky. Just when you think you get to know it, that's when it takes advantage of you. One thing that helps is if you have a buddy, and this is my buddy, one of my buddies. He, uh, he's never been trained as a diabetic dog, but uh, he will wake me up at night if my blood sugar is low. And we have another larger puppy that does the same thing. If you can get a diabetic dog, they can, uh, they can alert you. They can smell it in your breath. There's a couple different ways that uh, dogs can sense it but I would definitely suggest that, especially for a child. Um, it really, at nighttime, it's a whole different story. Um, I've had times where I just had to get up every so often, had to set an alarm just so I can check myself because your blood sugar is never the same. You can't 
You can't depend on it being the same every day. You can't depend on it being the same two days in a row. You can eat the same foods, the same amount of carbs every single day and it might change drastically or it might just change a little bit. But like once you've got think you've got it under control, then it then it'll get you. Many times I thought I've got this, not a problem, and that was a big mistake. Um, when you're exercising, it's much more difficult to manage. You've got to carry just about everything with you. You have to be prepared in, in strenuous and exercise situations constantly. You always have to know what's going on.